Burkina Faso has been making waves on social media since Captain Ibrahim Traoré took over the country. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, who took over Burkina Faso on September 30, 2022 through a coup, becoming Burkina Faso's new president and the youngest state leader in the world. Since his rise in power has brought a lot of change in his country, Burkina Faso. Leaders of Burkina Faso's two coups in 2022 both cited insecurity and various forms of misgovernance as reasons for their military takeovers. Both promised to restore constitutional order by June 2024, as agreed in the Economic Community of West African States, Hikala's coordinated transitional framework. The country's military leader, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, had promised a return to democracy with presidential elections by July 2024 when he came to power. The updated 14 October 2022 transitional roadmap set out four main objectives for the new regime. As every president would, Ibrahim Traoré had commitments as he came to power. The first was to fight terrorism and restore the country's territorial integrity. The government reorganized the defense and security forces, acquired new military equipment, and recruited about 10,000 army and navy officials. He went ahead to hire about 90,000 volunteers for the defense of the homeland. Although this move received mixed responses from the army and the public due to concerns over their training, supervision, and long-term prospects, all of which could worsen insecurity, he still decided to go with the risk. Government also created the Patriotic Support Fund to boost citizen engagement with security efforts. Another of Ibrahim Trohore's commitment was to deal with the country's humanitarian crisis. With nearly 2 million people internally displaced and over 36,000 refugees, Burkina Faso needs about 877 million US dollars to provide essential aid, shelter, healthcare, and support. But the funding gap remains, with extremely serious consequences for those in need. Regarding the goal of rebuilding the state and improving governance, the junta passed important new legislation targeting clientelism and political patronage in the public service. Anti-corruption efforts led to the arrest of former transport minister Vincent Dabogu and four others who received 11-year prison sentences for embezzlement and money laundering. The last of Captain Ibrahim Traoré's pledges was to supervise the holding of elections to restore constitutional and democratic rule come July 2024. With approximately three months until the end of the transition, there's a lack of urgency on the case. In a state TV interview last September, Ibrahim Traoré said his priority was addressing insecurity and safeguarding the nation, not elections. Referring to the elections, he told reporters, it's not a priority, I'll tell you that clearly, it's security that's the priority in a country plagued by jihadist violence. This raised concerns among political parties that polls would be delayed, especially since the technical preparations haven't started. The poor security situation could also offer a pretext to postpone the elections indefinitely. It's not new, there's an ongoing war and civil conflict between the government of Burkina Faso and Islamic rebels, which began in August 2015 and has led to the displacement of over 2 million people and the deaths of at least 10,000 civilians and combatants. During Blaise Compaoré's reign as president of Burkina Faso from 1987 to 2014, he treated Islamists somehow better than French colonial officials did. Comparé's Mauritanian advisor, Mustafa Old Limam Chafi, and General Gilbert Dindere both contacted several Islamist leaders in order to free hostages held by these groups. At that time, Burkina Faso acted as a mediator during the Mali War between rebels and the government. Also, Burkina Faso led an intervention into the country in 2013. However, in November 2014, Blaise Compaoré was overthrown, marking the end of his rule and since then, creating a scenario of instability. As earlier mentioned, Ibrahim Traoré considers security a top priority. 
He is committed to resolutely combating terrorism and insecurity that have plagued certain regions of Burkina Faso. To make this happen, he promotes a comprehensive security approach involving enhanced regional cooperation and the development of intelligence capabilities. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, since his rise to power, has not stopped making moves to better his nation and free them from the pressure of the West. He has a bold vision for Burkina Faso, aspiring to see a prosperous, stable, and united Burkina Faso, where every citizen has the opportunity to realize their full potential. Captain Ibrahim Traoré aims to boost Burkina Faso's economic growth by investing in agriculture, industry, infrastructure, and education. Creating jobs, reduce poverty, and improve the living conditions of the Burkina Bay population. Ibrahim Traoré is committed to promoting transparency, accountability, and good governance. He wants to strengthen democratic institutions, combat corruption, and ensure active participation of civil society in decision-making processes. Education and healthcare-wise, the captain understands that these two are pillars of human development. He plans to make substantial investments in these sectors to ensure equitable access to quality education and adequate healthcare services for all citizens of Burkina Faso. For Ibrahim Traoré, national unity is essential. He seeks to bring together the different ethnicities, religious groups, and regions of Burkina Faso by fostering dialogue, mutual respect, and tolerance. As promised, President Ibrahim Traoré was committed to fighting terrorism, yet respecting ECOWAS' transition timetable. But recently, Burkina Faso, along with neighbors Mali and Niger, have given notice of their immediate withdrawal from ECOWAS. This decision adds to doubts about Burkina Faso's ability to meet its transition deadlines. Burkina Faso has strengthened its political and military cooperation with Mali and Niger. Although as the ECOWAS withdrawal shows, this has come at the expense of stronger regional, and in some cases, international ties. Suggesting that more changes may occur coming from him, the junta leader mentioned that things were unfolding and that more changes were coming, not just about currency, but they envisioned breaking all ties that kept them in slavery. Captain Traoré also clarified that Burkina Faso has no plans to rejoin ECOWAS, saying their move was an irreversible one. To justify their exit from the economic community of West Africa, the three countries, now collectively known as the Alliance of Sahel States, AS, accused the regional organization of not assisting them against jihadists and deviating from the ideals of its founding fathers and pan-Africanism. This alliance gives them political cover and support in the face of growing pressure from ECOWAS and other regional institutions to comply with their transition deadlines. Widely seen as West Africa's top political and regional authority, the 15-nation bloc of ECOWAS, formed in 1975 to promote economic integration in member states, has struggled in recent years to reverse rampant coups in the region where citizens have complained of not benefiting from rich natural resources. Military power grabs took place in Mali in 2020 and 2021, in Burkina Faso in 2022, and in Niger in 2023. The regional body reacted by suspending all three countries and imposed heavy sanctions on Niger and Mali. Although Niger tried to amend ties with ECOWAS by inviting its representatives to the capital Niamey, only representation from Togo showed up. There is bad faith within this organization, said Ali Mahaman Amin Zin, Niger's army-appointed prime minister. Military leaderships in the three nations have vowed to tackle the rise of violent armed groups in their countries and have joined forces in the Alliance of Sahel States. The three countries have cut military ties with France, the former colonial power. France once had a strong presence across the Sahel, but announced the withdrawal of its troops from the three countries after the coups. West Africa recorded more than 1,800 attacks in the first six months of 2023 resulting in nearly 4,600 deaths and creating dire humanitarian consequences. 
According to an ECOWAS top officer, this was just a snippet of the horrendous impact of insecurity. Since 2005, the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice has had jurisdiction to hear human rights cases brought by citizens of ECOWAS states. The court has issued landmark decisions on human rights issues, including some concerning Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. For example, the court issued a 2008 ruling on slavery that held Niger responsible for failing to protect one of its citizens from enslavement by passively tolerating the practice. Withdrawal from the ECOWAS Treaty will deprive these countries' citizens of a key avenue for accountability, an independent and impartial tribunal, especially where access to justice at national courts is restricted. Despite all these, the three countries have made up their mind not to return to the bloc ECOWAS is made up of 15 member countries that are located in the Western African region. These countries have both cultural and geopolitical ties and shared common economic interest. Majority of these countries uses the West African CFA franc XOF as currency. But recently, the three countries, Mail, Niger, and Burkina Faso, have decided to abandon the CFA and adopt their own currency. But to successfully launch and maintain a multilateral currency, several key factors must be considered. Macroeconomic and budgetary policies must be closely coordinated. Rigorous harmonization of economic and budgetary policies between participating countries is imperative to guarantee the stability of the currency's value and prevent trade imbalances. Secondly, robust monetary management institutions must be established. Strong institutions responsible for currency management, like a common central bank, are essential. This central bank must have adequate authority to implement an independent and stable monetary policy. This will ensure the preservation of the currency's value and address cyclical fluctuations. Next, creating an integrated common market is vital. Finally, Mechanisms to monitor and resolve crises need to be established. For instance, common reserve funds and currency swap arrangements could help address external and internal shocks that may affect the new currency. Currency swaps when two parties exchange amounts in two different currencies for a certain period at a fixed rate can be used to manage exchange rate risks and facilitate cross-border financing. For the countries to successfully have their own currency, these conditions must be met. At the moment, it's difficult to say whether these conditions have been fully met in the three countries. It would mean having a good understanding of whether these, among other, conditions have been met. These three countries have been part of the West African Economic and Monetary Union since 1963. Therefore, in theory, this should give them some experience in coordinating economic and monetary policies through the CFA franc. They could have experience with infrastructure, like the Central Bank of West African States, which manages the single currency and monetary policy for member states. That would help them with the transition. Despite the risks involved, the initiative could bring several benefits, like establishing a larger monetary zone, which can foster greater trade integration and improved resource allocation. It could enhance the country's flexibility in dealing with external partners. By joining a new monetary union, these three countries could also benefit significantly from increased trade integration, independence from external partners, lower transaction costs, and investor attractiveness. Either ways, the countries have taken a bold step withdrawing from ECOWAS, then introducing a new currency. Burkina Faso, alongside these other African countries, have fully decided to cut ties with the West, and at this point, there's probably no turning back. Follow us as we keep you updated on these trending topics.